wrong with you? Chip, I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew. That's right, Chip. I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew. Actually, I'm jacked up on something called C4. Oh, it's another supplement I'm giving a shout out before I head into the gym. Want to jump on the mic and do a quick video? Why? Because I didn't do one this morning because I was running a bunch of errands. But there were some things I wanted to talk about. I want to talk about free agency of the Giants. I want to talk about the direction the Giants are heading to. I want to talk about everything that just Shane is doing. I want to talk about um, Justin Ellis. I want to talk about the the already um, over evaluating some of the talent we have signed by people on Twitter and other social media platforms. I thought we've gotten away from that. I thought we've gotten smarter than that. Well, some of us have. I'm not. And again, I, I, it's a very small percentage that I'm talking about, but they are people that are usually the most vocal and the loudest. Justin Ellis, of course, signed with the Giants. I think it was NewJersey.com. I saw that, you know, this was a great sign and this was going to this was going to turn the interior of the defense into a great run stopping defense. Because back in 2019, he was a number 11 run defender, according to Pro Football Focus. Well, according to Pro Football Focus last year, he was the 85th. <laughs> it's the fourth straight one year contract for Mr. For Mr. Ellis. At 6'5", 350 pounds, he, he's, he's the heaviest guy in the giant roster. He's going to be a guy that's going to be a, he's going to be a two down run stuffer. That's all he's going to be. But the problem is in the last three seasons, he's averaged like 33% of the snaps, the total defensive snaps. One season, he was 23. He, is, he was a rotational guy over with the Ravens. He's got 100 career games, 50 career starts. I believe he's only made 189 tackles in 100 career games as a run stuffer. It's just a fill-in guy. That's it. It's just a guy that's going to be filling in till we can find someone else to take the spot. That's all he is. This isn't a guy that is a hidden gem, a hidden talent. He hasn't really played regularly since the Raiders. Last three seasons, he's averaged under 33% of the defensive snaps. He's not going to get any better. When we signed some players last year that were going to be run stoppers, I pointed out the fact that I'm not going to mention who he was. Pointed out the fact that according to Pro Football Focus and other venerable organizations, he had played the pass better the last three seasons than the run. But don't worry, he was going to be a great run stuffer. The Giants free agency is this, and this is where you need to look at this realistically. I'm also going to talk about some of the, um, uh, I want to talk about the compensatory picks. We're going to get into that a little bit later. It's you're basically starting from ground zero with the Giants. I did a video twice that, um, and I called it uh, Dave Gettleman's scratch dent department about how he always would sign players that were coming off injuries and coming off issues and always had something going on. And the Giants are shopping in the bargain bin. The, sh- the Giants are shopping in the bargain bin at Walmart. And there's nothing wrong with the bargain bin at Walmart. I love the bargain bin at Walmart. Hell, I love the clearance section in, in Home Depot. But that's what it is. Their biggest signings are going to be the backup Tyrod Taylor and Mark Lewinsky. And I'm still concerned that Lewinsky is more of a product of a system in Indianapolis. Because people forget Indianapolis contemplated benching him last year. And he didn't excel in his entire career until he showed up in Indianapolis. So you have to hope he's more, but you got to give him credit. He's going to be more serviceable than anyone we got on the line last year. And and we hope to continue that. And then you got Ricky Seals Jones. Veteran minimum contract, but don't worry. He's going to be a rock star. He's a hidden talent that's been in the league for five years. Nobody knows who he is. John Feliciano missed 15 games over the last two seasons has 300 career snaps at center gave him 3.25 million, but that's the kind of guys we're going to sign because we don't have the money. We have a 16 million, potentially a $16 million cap hold for our draft choices, 16 million. So we don't have the money to go out and make these big signings, but I would, I would want people that, Try to influence other people on social media to understand what you're saying before you go out and say it. Because again, it's running false hope. This roster technically is probably going to be worse than last year. But that's just the way the Giants are, because it's we 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 knew this. 
when they when they shot their wad in free agency. That's what she said. And gave all that money to Kenny G and Dory Jackson and Kyle Rudolph and everyone else that they, you know that this was going to happen in 2021. Most of us knew this. Most of us saw this coming. So the question is going to be, let's be, re- you know, what? as fans, we need to be realistic the same way that Joe, that's you mean that Joe Shane and Brian Dable have on multitudes of a times realistically offered their insight about how this is going to work and how realistically we need to set expectations. And like I said, I give Joe Shane all the credit in the world because he's got great PR when it comes to this. And I think a lot of it has to do with everyone just be happy that Gettleman's gone, but they, he's got great PR when it comes to turning around and signing these guys because they're all just cheap veterans. It's just the way it is. And you know what? He has, he has made this exciting to say, to have a sign Ricky Seals Jones or whatever the hell's name. I don't even know his names because, and Justin Ellis just throwing that out there. Uh, some people ask me about the compensatory picks. Now the giants, of course, were probably, are probably going to get some picks, um, from Lorenzo Carter signing and also the, uh, the signings of, um, Evan Ingram. So, you know, there is a formula in regards to how, and you know, how you get these picks, um, you know, and so you have to look at the, I don't want to get into the formula, and it's, it's actually based on a confidential formula, which is used by the NFL, but it kind of factors in contracts, a player signed, the playing time and performance. Um, and that really kind of shows what the quality of the compensatory pick is going to be. Uh, and then, the, then the teams must end up with more or better qualifying free agents lost than gained in a particular year. So in other words, the giants have to have lost people of greater talent than that they are signing. Like Glowinski is probably going to be a six uh, round compensatory pick for the Colts. Tyrod Taylor looks like will end up probably being a six round compensatory pick for the Texans. Feliciano, um, Feliciano was an unrestricted free agent, so he is not going to qualify for anything in a reference to um, a reference to the compensatory picks as well. Um, and none of the other guys. Yeah, uh, what's uh, the running back, the Seals Jones, Ward, and uh, which and Douglas? They're not going to qualify for any for any compensatory. Uh, compensatory com- excuse me, com- <laughs> they're not going to qualify for any compensatory picks. Um, now, for the free agents, they lost. It looks like the, let's see, the Engram signed about nine million. So honestly, funny if you go by the cap value, he's probably going to be worth a fifth round pick. And I said this last year, I would have kept Ingram all year because if he balls out, you're probably going to get anywhere between a third to a fifth round pick, which is probably what you would have got with him last year as well. Austin Johnson, who signed that two-year $14 million deal with the Chargers, which 10 and a half, 10.6 of that is guaranteed, um, he's going to probably be about a six-round pick since he had a $3 million deal with the Giants last season and had a, last year and had a good season. Lorenzo Carter shockingly signed a one-year $3.5 million with the uh, with the Falcons, and two of that's already guaranteed. Um, so th- that was, you know, we're looking at... Um, we're looking at at least a content, a, excuse me, a compensatory pick of uh, probably around a seventh rounder from him as well. Uh, Keenan Crossan, I would say he's probably going to be valued at a seventh uh, round pick as well, considering he signed a three year, $9.54 million deal with the Dolphins. I think three of that is guaranteed. Primary is going to be used as a special teams player. Uh, he, he negotiated the contract himself. I didn't know that. I, I read that somewhere. He was actually negotiating, the, he was actually negotiating that. Um, so, you know, it, it would be it would be interesting because you have to remember some of these picks are going to cancel each other out. So you figure you're probably going to get um, you figure you're probably going to get a, the compensatory pick for Ingram and I would say Johnson, because like I said, you have to look at the players signed via the players lost. So I think if you take it through that formula and like I said, this formula is a guarded formula. It's like the formula for Coke. You know, it, it's guarded. Um, so you got to look at it. So you figured some of the six rounders for the six rounders will probably cancel out for Johnson and the seventh round, they'll probably cancel out for Carter. Um, and, but you'll probably still get two picks 
for I would say, well, you probably got to pick for Ingram. I know you got to pick from Ingram. It's really going to be it's really going to be interesting. You'll probably get a pick for Ingram and Austin Johnson, but you're going to lose out on the two picks because they're going to cancel them out via our signings in reference to Carter and Crossan. That's what I'm thinking. Or maybe, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know because, like I said, it's this this formula has never been divulged to the general public. So, but we will get. I assume we'll get at least two picks, and I assume we'll probably get one. Like I said, for I figure we'll get one for either Ingram or Carter, or maybe even Johnson. But we'll get at we'll get at least two picks if you go by total value. Have the big stream coming up on Sunday, ten thirty Eastern Standard Time. Talking everything draft, talking everything Giants. Join in. Don't forget to go down and download the app, the online Big Blue mobile app, which is free. Get it at the Google Play Store. You're supposed to get alerts when new videos comes out, when stuff comes up on Twitter. And uh, like I said, you can watch our videos. You can watch, uh, uh, listen to the podcast. You can do everything on Twitter. So that's fun. It's also free. It's going to be up on the Apple Play Store. Uh, store. It's going to be up. It's going to be up on the Apple Play Store as well. And again, this is Tim with the online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk entertainment. And as always, if you like. Subscribe. If you're that button, it means that'd be awesome.